Ladies and gentlemen, he's over there. He's waiting to come on. He is Mr. Tom Tumulty. What, this whole thing? Oh. <laughs> Hello, how you doing? You enjoying yourselves? You having a good time? Excellent, good. Glad somebody is. Because uh, frankly, I am shitting myself up here. You know, all these brilliant comedians from the stand-up comedy class at Strathclyde University and me. Um, and the problem is, when I get nervous, uh, it sort of triggers my obsessive compulsive disorder. I call it my CDO. Uh, it's the same as OCD, but in alphabetical order like it should be. <laughs> Eight, nine, ten. Relax. So, uh, any students in tonight? Oh, thank God for that. I mean, it's not exactly a long shot, is it? Come on. Glasgow has three universities, four if you count Paisley. So Glasgow has three universities. Um, <laughs> dozens of colleges, there's about 70,000 students in the area and this place sells booze. What are the odds, eh? So, where are you studying? Edinburgh. Edinburgh. <laughs> <laughs> oh well, never mind, better luck next time. <laughs> I went to Glasgow myself. I decided to study English at university, so I went to Glasgow. My mate John, he decided to study the English at university, so he went to St Andrews. Um, and I have to say, it didn't turn out very well for him. You, you know what they're like, St Andrews. Do you think the cape is me, Julian? Oh, absolutely, Sebastian. Um, and he kind of went native up there, and he came back to Drum Chapel doing all this. I say, old chap, jolly good. Ha, 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 ha. Yeah. <laughs> God rest his soul. <laughs> <sighs> but St Andrews, of course, is where Kate Middleton met her husband to be. And not a lot of people know that she wasn't too sure of him at first. Because he was introduced as William Arthur Philip Louis Mountbatten Windsor Wales. And she thought that was a bit tricky. But she felt happier when she was told his nickname was Big Willie. Because <laughs> she thought she could get her tongue round that. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, in Tokyo Middleton's, there's her sister Pippa, of course. Now, Pippa Middleton, there's a name that divides the audience into three. The straight men are all sitting there thinking, did you see her in that dress? The gay men are sitting there thinking, did you see her in that dress? The fabric was fabulous, darling. The stitching detail was to die for. And the women are sitting there thinking, aye, very nice, I saw her in the dress, very nice. Well, see how nice that bum looks as used to three kids. <laughs> Skinny bitch. Um, I bet she's secretly a ginger anyway. <laughs> and of course, now the straight men are thinking, secretly a ginger? I wonder. I think I know how to find out. So they'll be home tonight and write onto Google, is Pippa Middleton, oh, stuff it. Pippa's pubes, click. <laughs> Screen results, three results for Pippa Pig's pubes. <laughs> Did you mean Pippa's pubes? Of course, he meant Pippa's pubes, click. Screen results, 5,427 results for Pippa's pubes. And the thing about that is that after all of that, she didn't even win the Year of the Year award. It went to Carol Vorderman. Now, Pippa Middleton's 28 and Carol Vorderman's 51. And Carol Vorderman won the Year of the Year award. I'm sorry, it doesn't add up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'll have one from the bottom and none from the top, thank you, Harry. <laughs> and the thing that worries me about that is, is not talking about disrespecting the royals and not talking about oral sex when my wife and one of my sons is in the audience. That doesn't bother me at all, but what kind of sick mind comes up with the idea of a website devoted to Peppa Pig's pubes? I'm sorry, it's just shameful, <laughs> isn't it? <laughs> so anyway, um, I read something in the paper the other day and it surprised me. I thought I was dyslexic. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I went down the pump and there was this big sign in the door, no dyslexics. So I went in. <laughs> and I sat down at the table and it was the usual thing in Glasgow. It was a bunch of guys down the pub sitting around the table discussing sex. Or to use the scientific proper term for it, lying. <laughs> and one of them said something that amazed me. He said apparently the vast majority of men have got a pet name for their penis. And I thought, what kind of pet name? In fact, I can actually think of a couple of names you wouldn't give as pet names for your penis. Tiddles. 
spot we definitely don't want to <laughs> So I thought, how am I going to find a pet name for mine? Because I've never thought of this before. And I turned to classical Greek mythology, well, which of us wouldn't, you know. Um, and I came up with the idea of Cyclops. <laughs> so I looked in the mirror. Personally, I used the shaving mirror, talking to the magnifying sound. <laughs> it helps, that's all I'm saying, it helps. So I looked in the mirror and I thought, Cyclops, one-eyed giant? Nah, I can never pull that off. <laughs> But eventually I came up with the name Derry, which is short for Derringer. And the reason I chose that is because Derringer, and I looked this up on Google, it's defined as the smallest usable weapon of its kind. <laughs> so I looked in the mirror, shaving mirror, turned to the magnifying side, um, and I thought, Derringer, smallest usable weapon of its kind? Now that I could pull off. <laughs> and that, ladies and gentlemen, means that I've come to the climax of my set. Thank you very much. You've been fantastic. I've been Tom Tom. Good night.